In today's episode of Zista Podcast, we're going to go deeper into the IoT and electronics manufacturing space. And joining us today is Ashish Chintak. In the previous week, we had one episode where we talked about uh, the, the scope of uh, careers in this industry, why we need qualified engineers. And today we're going to go a little deeper to try and understand some of the roles and responsibilities of IoT engineers. Welcome to the Zista Podcast, where we invite industry professionals and academicians to answer questions that students have within a specific subject area. In today's show, we're going to be going deeper into IoT and electronics manufacturing. And joining me is Ashish Chintal. Hi, Ashish. Thank you for joining us uh, for another episode on the Zista Podcast. Hey, Avet. Thank you. Uh, good to be back again uh, and share more perspectives on the last episode that I shared earlier. Right. In fact, I really enjoyed the last session where we were talking a lot about electronics manufacturing, how the industry has a bright future in India. You did a good job in detailing, uh, you know, the design uh, versus manufacturing side of the business, what kind of skill sets are required. Um, so I was hoping to go a little deeper in this episode, right? Absolutely. Um, I wanted to start by asking you, how is IoT changing the way electronics are designed and produced? Yeah, so uh, the key point that I mentioned in my first episode uh, was uh, these devices have now become smarter. So the right. one thing that becomes uh, a necessity is ability of those devices to talk to uh, it, its commander or uh, uh, or a controller uh, wirelessly, which means you need to add uh, what we call as a wireless uh, enablement of that device. And uh, there are ways to do it. So there are some specific, uh, what we call as IC integrate chips that gets added, which is an electronic devices onto those uh, 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 appliances, so to speak. Uh, and what this does is it it enables those uh, appliances to talk over uh, Bluetooth uh, connectivity via a Wi-Fi connectivity via uh, cellular connectivity, it could be 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. And there are some specialized uh, connectivity, uh, which is called as LoRa, uh, low radiation WAN. Uh, this is some specifically used in some industrial IoT application. Then uh, there is something called as uh, NB-IoT, uh, narrow band IoT, which is offered by uh, some of the cellular service providers specifically for IoT application. Uh, the important part here is, uh, connectivity uh, that the device needs to be able to talk to its uh, controller or a platform. Uh, and second is the life of the device itself, because for some of the application, they do not get continuous power over a 230 volt or uh, regular line. Imagine an industrial application, if you're working in a mines area, or if you're working on a uh, on an ice cream cart and you want to track the location of that. It does not have an electricity. So we are dependent on the battery. Uh, so the life of the battery uh, is also a consideration into IoT devices. So so the number, uh, the amount of battery consumption is also taken into factor when designing an IoT product. Connectivity, uh, battery, uh, and the third bit, which is the intelligence layer, which is uh, the AI logic. Uh, how do I collect the data? So there are some sensors which gets added onto the appliances and then collect that data, uh, filter out the data because the data is humongous. If you, if you capture every five seconds some data, you, you don't need unless there is a clear variation. So you filter out that data, uh, then you extract information from that data and then you take some action. Again, that intelligence layer over the cloud platform that can decide uh, whether, hey, uh, should I switch it off? Should I disable that particular uh, device or not? Or uh, should I collect the data? Or should I alert the owner? Hey, so and so thing is happening. Do you want to take action? Okay. All right. So a lot of change really. And I think as the industry is evolving, uh, the technology uh, the platforms, the processes, the protocols, all of that is evolving as well. And it it really, I would imagine to stay in touch, you know, to be on top of everything, it would require a lot of knowledge intensive kind of reading, right? And uh, 
uh, I'm sure there's a, a very strong learning curve that you know con- keeps continuing. Right, and and this IoT as an industry is more of a partner-driven uh, industry and an ecosystem-driven right. industry because not one player can do everything. They are absolutely adding uh, uh, their capability or their expertise into the whole piece of an IoT offering. Because as I mentioned earlier, there is a connectivity layer, so telecom providers will come into play. There are uh, hardware devices and sensing capability. So there are manufacturers like us who build, design product and manufacture them. Then uh, there are platform players who who come up with a software application to collect this data and take uh, any action that might be required for the application. Someone built mobile application, so that's uh, different. Then there are cloud players uh, like uh, GCP, AWS, and Microsoft Azure who provide cloud services. So each of them uh, are kind of giving their offering. And there's someone called as a system integrator, uh, which are players such as Infosys, Wipro, who put together the whole piece and then offer a solution to, for example, uh, Pepsi or a Coke, or, or or a chain of hospital to deploy an IoT solution. That's so awesome, you know, and it it sounds very systematic, you know, uh, how all of these things actually come together. Ashish, I also wanted you to, you know, also talk about some of the roles and responsibilities of an IoT engineer or developer. Uh, could you tell us about that? Yeah, um, so um, IoT uh, Developer, uh, I briefly covered in my previous uh, episode was sure. uh, someone uh, uh, who can understand the requirement or from, for example, there could be an audio company based in Europe wanting to build a product, let's say similar to an Alexa. Now, uh, there would be business analyst who will work with a uh, developer or an uh, IoT engineer uh, to understand, uh, okay, what kind of uh, mic uh, distance it should support, uh, how from how far can someone give a command, uh, what should be the wattage of the speaker, so that how lo- loud it can right, uh, what should be the shape and size, and most importantly uh, these days, uh, what we call as design for cost, because I can build a product which can come at hundred dollars, but I also want to build a product which can come at five dollars. Sorry. So building a product uh, uh, also for a cost is an important skill set because ultimately that product needs to be sold. There needs to be a buyer for that product. Then uh, there needs to, recently there have been a lot of disruptions in the supply chain. So right. designing a product for a procurement. Can I procure the product locally within India or uh, at a two kilometer distance from my office versus procuring it from Taiwan or China or Korea, uh, those factors. Are those components easily available or there is a wait time of six months? What is the pricing of those components? So all those factors will come into play while designing an electronics product. So uh, it's cost, it is design, and uh, then uh, again, this is derived from what requirements we are capturing. And once we have this information, then we do the component selection, we design the PCB, uh, we do coding, uh, firmware coding for the ICs. We come up with a prototype. Uh, then uh, we also involve mechanical engineers because while electronics engineer can work on the electronics part, but the look and feel depends upon the mechanical engineer because they are going to make it look beautiful. They are going to make it uh, look more uh, uh, ergonomically uh, viable uh, for the users so that there is more uh, adoption. Uh, and easy to use. Uh, so those factors uh, are played by the mechanical engineers. Uh, so it's culmination of both putting together a product, uh, an electronics engineer and mechanical engineer, and then they work out and create a product. That's really cool. So it's ergonomics, target cost approach, uh, usability, all of those aspects are taken into consideration. And uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, in terms of skill sets and responsibilities, it, it's also kind of dynamic. Uh, because you need to go maybe just beyond your pure play discipline, uh, learn some assets or, or facets which are relevant uh, to this specific domain. Um, but thank you so much for you know talking about the roles and responsibilities. You know, uh, I wanted to talk to you about you know some of the challenges and learnings that you may have faced or that you may have gained while working in this industry. 
yeah so uh, for for me i i, I transitioned from uh, telecom to it to consulting and then to manufacturing right uh, the skill set that i brought to this industry was, you know, was on the sales side on the marketing side was uh, also around uh, how to handle customers how to do project management but i had very limited knowledge about the manufacturing bit and that's where uh, i worked with uh, my team who spent a lot of time in the industry 15 20 uh, years uh, in the space i learned uh, the aspects related to manufacturing from um, them uh, but today uh, in about 2 years i am in a position to uh, talk about uh, all the nuts and bolts which are involved uh, in offering a manufacturing services um, so it's it's i would say uh, you'll have to spend some time you'll have to work hard uh, you'll have to do a lot of learning you'll have to ask a lot of questions Uh, to understand the technology part of the manufacturing but purely for me uh, the experience of multi industry helped me to handle the business side of things but technology is what i picked up awesome awesome this brings me to the the last question that i want to kind of <laughs> ask you ashish in terms of how is electronics manufacturing helping india become more sustainable yeah so the first bit i would say is uh, dependency on uh, imports reduces which right. helps us uh, reduce the uh, deficit uh, with a particular country uh, the current ac- account deficit reduces so sure. uh, number one number two uh, it also helps promote uh, the industries within our country so uh, which which translates into creating more jobs uh, which translate in, in into our gdp improving uh, which means the purchasing power improves and uh, we are able to uh, pull more people out of uh, poverty so these are the two key reasons i would say why we should become uh, self reliant and uh, uh, and a bonus to that would be some special industry for example defense is an area where you cannot depend on uh, some other country so you have to create your own ecosystem of uh, manufacturing so for that reason it is very important that we promote this industry and become self reliant all right thank you so much for you know walking us through that and uh, i'd also like to say thank you for coming back on the zista podcast making time for one more session with us we really enjoyed interacting with you ashish thank you amit and uh, thank you zista podcast for uh, uh, having me here i uh, really appreciate and uh, enjoyed my time here thank you pleasure I hope you enjoyed today's session. I certainly learned a lot from Ashish. He is the head of strategy and business operations at Nabilo Digital Solutions, and it's clear to me that he's kept learning throughout the course of his career, an essential trait for success, I would say. I hope you've enjoyed this session, and we would encourage you to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, follow us on podcast platforms like Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. Our handle is the Zista Podcast. Till we meet again, I'd say, stay curious. <laughs>